Hello guys, good day. Today we're going to be talking about the history and uses of fingerprint identification. So, um, this will be the first lecture that we will be conducting in uh, Unit 2 of uh, the subject matter personal identification techniques. Okay, so we have here the first topic that we will be talking about, the history of fingerprint. Uh, saan nga ba nagmula ang konsepto ng fingerprint based on the recorded data that, that we have no? according according to the information that we have fingerprint identification system is believed to have uh, originated to have been originated in China okay so um, in the in China they are using the concept or or they're using the fingerprint as a form of signature uh, if you can remember hanggang ngayon actually ginagawa pa rin natin ang pamamaraan na ito i mean ginagamit pa rin natin ang fingerprint as an alternative signature especially for those individual na uh, hindi kayang magbasa or magsulat so, yung thumb mark na ginagamit natin also signifies our um, identity, will vouch our identity. So, it can be used as an alternative way of, uh, you know, vouching your identity. Especially if you're entering into some contracts, na Pag pumapasok ka sa isang kontrata at kailangan mong pumerma, sometimes they are uh, also requiring the attachment of the thumb marks or or sometimes the fingerprint as it vouches your identity. So that concept pala originated in China na yung paggamit ng fingerprint or thumb mark in in order to uh, acknowledge the the content of a certain document or in order to prove that you agree with with the content of of the content of the document. So that concept is the first recorded uh, use of fingerprint in in a uh, not really directed into our field but pwede natin sabihin na related din naman siya sa criminology and since we are talking about establishing identity ano, so it it is uh, related somewhat related to our field also in uh, 246 to 210 BC uh, there is a recorded information here. We have Emperor uh, Tai and Shi. He devised the system that uses the concept of fingerprint in order to prove uh, ownership of of a certain uh, of a certain property of a certain object. Da? So uh, aside from using signature. Or as aside from using fingerprint as as a signature, it appears that they had already they also had devised a way of uh, using the concept of fingerprinting in order to prove ownership or as a proof of ownership of of some properties in in their in that country. Da? So uh, that is uh, somewhat the recorded or uh, early uh, recorded uh, significant events that we can relate to the development of of uh, fingerprinting, no? And to the history of fingerprinting. I know that uh, marami pa kasi, no? It it's not only in China but in different countries somewhat ang nangyayari kasi nito. The the concept did not develop or did not evolve or was not formulated in a single country. Most of the time, no, may mga countries din na nag-develop din ng concept na ito then later on na lamang nagsama-sama na lang siya in order to strengthen the the point, the principles and the you know, yung yung concept mismo ng fingerprinting. So I I'm I'm not going to isolate the development of this in one country alone kasi I, we don't know eh. Maybe there's some uh, history that that is also attributed to the development of of uh, fingerprinting uh, that had originated in other countries and it only happens that uh, what what we uh, what we have uh, encountered is the development that was uh, made in china okay so uh, please do not limit yourself on on this lecture only no? so if you have 
other researches that proved that there are other countries that had developed their way of fingerprint or they had developed their own adaptation on the concept of fingerprinting. So you might uh, want to uh, include that on your review materials or you might want to include that on on the on your uh, further readings okay so uh, next topic that we will be talking about is the contributors to the development of fingerprint system we have here the different personalities now i would like to to point out also that again it's the development of fingerprint system is not only limited to the following individuals there are other or there are a lot of personalities that was not included here no just to uh, cut short the discussion, we just selected some of the major uh, contributors to the field of dactyloscopy or fingerprinting. Like for example, we have uh, Professor Marcelo Malpighi. We have also Professor uh, Johans uh, Evang Evangelis Perkinji. And we have uh, Sir, uh, Sir William J. Herschel. Uh, we have Dr. Henry Folds, we have Sir Francis Galton, we have Sir Ed, uh, Edward Henry. So uh, they will be the, the, the focus of uh, the discussion today. As, uh, as I've stated, marami pang pwedeng isali dito but then uh, I've not included them uh, for the purpose of uh, further research sa mga uh, learners natin. So let's talk about Professor Marcelo Malpighi first. So, uh, what is his contribution to the field of dactyloscopy or fingerprinting? Um, Professor Marcello Malpighi is an Italian biologist and a physician. He, he was the uh, origin of the term loops and spiral. Now, yung loops and spiral na terms are used to connote the... Uh, different patterns the, uh, different patterns that we have in fingerprint so uh, loops and spirals are actually a term used to describe the two family uh, classification of fingerprints such as the whirls and the loops the, and loops sometimes is divided into two um, we have the ulnar loop and radial loop anyway we will be talking about on those more when we reach that topic but I just mentioned it because one of the contribution of Marcelo Malpighi was the term loops and spirals. Da? And uh, also, as you can uh, see, since, uh, professor, uh, since um, professor Malpighi, Malpighi is an Italian biologist, then uh, he is more focused, more likely on, on the different uh, physical parts of human body and one of of the contribution that he added to the field of uh fingerprinting was was when he was uh you know he discovered a certain layer on the skin and it was named after him no so that's the malpighian layer it's it's a part of of the inner part of our skin so uh although uh Professor Malpighi somewhat created these terms that describes the fingerprint pattern. No? He did not mention any uh, of the, you know, any of uh, the significance of fingerprinting to the field of personal identification. So what he just contributed was uh, distinguishing or pointing out that there is this recognizable patterns that can be observed into the human skin. Na? So, yun lamang yung, yung kinontribute niya kasi. Na, pinans, napansin niya na may mga patterns pala doon sa ating uh, balat na pwede nating uh, ma-recognize or pwede nating i-classify but he did not mention any of its potential or the potential of fingerprinting to become a way of establishing identity. No? Still, Professor Malpighi still uh, had, re had a significant contribution to the field of fingerprinting. Let's proceed to Professor Johans E. Porkinji. No? So, uh, what did 
Professor Johans E. Perkinji had contributed to the field of fingerprinting, he was the one who discussed the nine fingerprint patterns. So we have, uh, I mentioned a while ago that there is this three major family of fingerprint patterns such as loop, arch, and whirls. However, uh, there are these uh, wide classifications of, of fingerprint patterns as discussed by Professor Perkinji, the, the nine fingerprint patterns. No? So this is a recognizable patterns also. The, uh, this is a recognizable topic that, that we will be talking soon as, as soon as we reach that uh, part of the lecture, yung, yung nine fingerprint patterns. Yeah. But I would like you to remember then when we talk about the nine fingerprint patterns, it is no other than Professor Perkinji who uh, discuss all of those who, con who conceptualize, who make uh, a written record of all of those patterns. And uh, the same as uh, Marcelo or Professor Marcelo Malpighi, no? uh, despite coming up with the patterns, nine fingerprint patterns, Professor Johans Perkinji did not mention also of the potential of fingerprinting to uh, to become a, a way of pers uh, to to become a way of establishing personal identity. So they only had uh, come up with a classification, come up with with the pattern types, but they did not mention of the potential of this system to become, you know, of of what is what it is known today as as. Uh, a reliable way of establishing identity nah? so only if they knew that uh, this is how important this discovery was uh, before and how did it impacted the field of criminal investigation in the field of criminology as of today so uh, Perkin G and Malpighi, Malpighi did not mention any of its potential to become a way or a method of establishing identity. Then let us proceed to uh, Sir William J. Herschel. No? Sino naman si Sir William J. Herschel? So he is the representative ng English government sa India, no? wherein he used fingerprints to provide uh, to prevent impersonation. Actually, there there is this funny trivia, a uh, funny fact about William. J. Herschel, no? Actually, uh, he, yes, he was credited as the first person to, to ever use fingerprints in order to provide impersonation. Yung parang, uh, you know, somewhat identity theft or something, na parang ganun, kasi yung concept ng impersonation ba, na parang uh, nakawin yung identity niya or may ibang tao na magpanggap na siya para makapanloko ng ibang tao. So, out of, you know, parang just a little bit of story, okay, Herschel. No? So, he was assigned in, in India and uh, there is, you know, meron yung mga tinatawag nating uh, contracts that he must enter into. So, yung mga kontrata na pinipermahan niya before to, to the locals na yung mga taga doon is uh, nilalagyan niya ng kanyang palm print doon sa likod ng document. No? And, and the purpose of this, or, or William Herschel does na have no idea on, you know, fingerprint identification, palm print identification. He has no idea about it. Na parang ginawa niya lang para i-intimidate kumbaga yung, yung mga locals na um, hindi nila or hindi nila siya maluloko in terms of documents na parang I'm attaching or affixing my my palm print or maybe yeah, fingerprint on on this document para patunayan na or para malaman ko if there is you know uh the panloloko or there is this uh, possible tendency na na uh, nakawin yung personality uh, yung nakawin yung identity ko parang ganun para hindi makopya magaya yung kanyang signature and whatsoever but he has no idea on the concept of fingerprint identification or palm print identification. Parang ginawa niya lang yun to intimidate the locals. And it happens nga that that's uh, actually you know, benefic beneficial 
onto the part of him since that is actually one way of sealing your identity and um tawag dun, para pagtibay uh, but uh, also is uh, can be used to prevent any yung, yung fear niya nga na identity theft or so on since he knows probably that there is uniqueness in fingerprints but he does not know he did, do not know about the concept of fingerprinting and so on so that is William J. Herschel. No? He was the first person who... Yung ginagawa niya is lagyan niya ng palm print niya uh, yung likod ng documents ng mga pinepermahan niya. So, he was the one who uh, did that for the first time. Okay? And, uh, yun nga, he, he became part of the history. So, I guess, uh, minsan, follow your instinct. That's what uh, William J. Herschel did. And he became a pioneer of using palm print as a way of sealing his identity. Okay? And we have also Dr. Henry Folds. Dr. Henry Folds was uh, the, the person who published an article in a scientific journal. Now, wherein he discussed the fingerprint as a means of personal identification. So, first time ever na merong... Merong pioneer tayo dito na nag, nag uh, nakakita doon sa potential nga ng fingerprint system or fingerprints natin to establish the identity of a certain person. So, dito na prino propose no? Dr. Henry Falls was the first person who proposed that, you know, this fingerprints, itong fingerprints natin is very unique and can be used for personal identification. His idea, na, pinasa yung idea niya kay, kay uh, Dr. Charles Darwin. Na, eh, kilala naman natin siguro siya. However, at that time, Charles Darwin was no longer in good condition. May sakit na siya. And parang he's very problematic by then. That's why sinabi niya that I will pass the, the paper to my cousin which, is, which happens to be Francis Galton para pag-aralan niya yung prino propose o yung yung idea na binuo ni Dr. Henry Falls. Okay? But still, now with regards to the first person to ever recognize the the potential of fingerprints in personal identification and even criminal investigation, ha, he made mention Dr. Henry Falls even made mention that you know, we can get prints from the crime scene and we can use that to identify the person who committed the crime or the person who happens to be at the crime scene when the crime was committed. So, yun yung mga innovations na, yun yung mga proposals ni Dr. Henry Faults. Okay? Then we have Sir Francis Galton, the, the, the good cousin of Charles Darwin, kung saan niya pinasa yung, yung um, idea ni Dr. Henry Faults. So, Francis Galton also developed or devised the complete system. No? So, from the idea of Henry Falls, Francis Galton devised now the, the complete system. Gumawa na siya ng sistema kung paano gagamitin ang fingerprint para ma-establish yung identity ng isang tao or para ma-resolve yung, uh, para malaman yung identity ng suspects when, when it comes to criminality no so uh, one of the uh, no, one of the known contribution of francis galton was he he really explained statistically the the possibility of persons having the same fingerprints no so pinag-aralan niya talaga at inestablish niya that fingerprint is very unique and its uniqueness is really um beyond na no, yung expected nating nating uh, capability niya so he made mention nga that the likelihood of a person to have the same fingerprint patterns in its minute details na no, is 1 out of or 1 in uh, 64 billion no so yun yung chances na sinabi niya na ganito ang chances na ang isang tao ay magkaroon ng kaparehas na fingerprint. Da? 
isa sa 64 billion na tao. So I don't know if if that's really is uh, statistically correct, but it it really shows that uh, ilan ba ang tao, ilan ba ang population natin ngayon. So if we have we are kung na ang population natin nasa 60 billion so there's no chance what what is what it is uh, showing us is that there's no chance really that a two person will have the same fingerprint pa, uh, fingerprint patterns in minute details no kasi yung patterns pwedeng magkakaparehas yung mga details niya yung mga maliliit na detalye na makikita sa fingerprint yun yung sinasabi nating imposibleng magkaparehas okay So uh, another of his contribution was he divided the the types of fingerprint into the three known family na uh, patterns that we have today and until now ginagamit pa rin yung arches we have loops and we have whorls na tinatawag. So that's the three major family of uh, fingerprint patterns that we have. So all of those can be credited to Sir Francis Galton. And finally, we have Sir Edward Henry. No? So, Edward Henry devised a system of classification, a system of classification which was adapted to the, uh, for, for identification of criminals. No? And uh, he also devised yung tinatawag nating filing system. Yung, yung filing system, it's, it's how we file the different uh, fingerprint records of of a certain individual. No kasi isa 'yan sa pinaka mahirap actually na na procedure under personal under uh, fingerprint or fingerprint identification system yung tinatawag nating filing kasi there's there is this uh, computation, there is this uh, formulas na kailangan masunod bag magbago tayo magkaroon ng uh, fingerprint record. It's it's not like I know it's not like you you put your fingerprint and it's okay already if a file na lang, na lang yan according to according to uh, maybe names no it it does not happen like that hindi hindi kasi name yung basihan pag nag-file sila ng fingerprint record ng isang tao they have their own way of uh filing system and that was what uh, Edward Henry had uh developed kasi imagine mo if if fingerprint records are being filed according to according to the name of the owner then mahirap 'yan na kasi kung kung criminal investigation ang pinag-uusapan natin ang makukuha mo lang sa crime scene is probably uh, a latent print na no? yung mga uh, non-visible print na naiwan nung nung uh, offender doon sa crime scene So we don't have any identity. Establish mo palang yun based on the records that you have. So what you need to do is to know the fingerprint classification of of the fingerprint that was found on the crime scene para doon mo siya hanapin if may kaparehas ba siya doon sa record. It's it's a bit of compl- uh, it's a bit complicated actually to to study this, no? So, but then uh, we will be enlightened uh, soon as as soon as we we get to that topic no? so i'm just giving you the idea that uh, there is this filing system or classification and filing system na ginagawa para ma, ma- efficiently ma record and mas madaling ma mas madaling mahanap yung uh, fingerprint record ng isang tao na gusto nating hanapin based on its Uh, minute details. So that was uh, yung yung fingerprint classification system na ito na yung yung filing system na ito was to be credited to Sir Ed, uh, Sir Edward Henry. Okay? So as I've stated there are a lot of other individuals who had made a contribution to the field of fingerprinting, no? But uh, they uh, were not mentioned here. And uh, maybe later on we will be conducting a separate lecture also or additional lecture regarding to other individuals who contributed also in the field of fingerprinting. But uh, then for the purpose of this lecture, I just only selected some of the uh, major contributors sa field ng uh, 
uh, personal identification natin. Ngayon, punta naman tayo doon sa next topic natin which is the uses of fingerprint. Uh, so we have here four practical uses of fingerprint. Una, yung tinatawag nating uh, fingerprint helps in establishing identity. Uh, of course, we know that already kasi we always mention that. Na sabi natin, fingerprint, uh, fingerprint is a good aid in establishing the identity of a certain person. Kasi nga, uh, yes, the fingerprints are unique. So, we can be able to establish the identity of a person in case na meron tayong dead bodies whose identity is not clear. Diba? Yung mga, minsan ito nangyayari sa mga chop-chop victim. Na, wherein sometimes uh, criminals think na pag inalis mo yung mukha, o, so yung chinachop-chop, inalis yung, inalis yung ulo, then the body can no longer be identified. Uh, there's so there's still a way na uh, and that yan nga papasok yung fingerprint natin so fingerprint is very much um important in the field of criminal investigation especially in establishing the identity of dead bodies unknown dead bodies na so uh also for for missing person kasi Pwede rin natin ma-establish yung identity ng isang tao na probably hindi niya alam yung, yung identity niya, nagkaroon ng amnesia or nagkaroon ng tra tragedy which caused him to forget about his identity. No? So we can assist him in uh, knowing or gaining back his memory by knowing his identity through fingerprint. Pwede rin natin gamitin yan. Okay? So that's just one of the practical use of fingerprint. Establishing identity. No? It's not only dead bodies, but also in, in you know daily activities natin, no? wherein we, we need to identify a certain person through identification. That that is pretty much reliable also. Uh, two number two is we have here the prints. We are referring to the fingerprints recovered from the crime scene associate person or weapon. Okay. So, what does it signify if a certain fingerprint was found on the crime scene? Diba? Yun yung, yun yung parang gusto nating tanongin. So, ibig bang sabihin na kapag ang fingerprint ko nakita sa crime scene, na, doon sa pinangyarihan ng krimen, would that mean that I am the one who committed the crime? Kaya? Na? E, yun ba ang implication niya? Actually, no. Sa, sa field ng forensics, it, it does not uh, prove guilt no? having your print uh, yung, yung fingerprint mo na iwan sa crime scene does not prove guilt only it associate you to the crime scene ang pinapatunayan ng fingerprint ladies and gentlemen sa crime scene is not the guilt no? whether or not guilty yung tao no or hindi. Ang pinapatunayan ng fingerprint na naiwan sa crime scene is that that the person whose fingerprint was found on the crime scene was at the crime scene on or before or during the crime is being committed. Yun yung kanyang pinapatunayan. And it's up to you na lang, you the investigator, to prove whether or not what's his connection to the crime or what is his knowledge to the crime that was committed. So, prints, sabi nga natin, fingerprints that are found at the crime scene associate the person or even the weapon use in, in, the, um, in the crime scene. So, that's how important is fingerprinting in the field of criminal investigation. Uh, number three use of fingerprint is we have, it is very useful in uh, criminal record verification. Again, so uh, as you can see, on how we process yung booking process ng, ng criminal na tinatawag, na pag inarest yung isang individual, na part of his booking process is mugshot and meron tayong fingerprint, uh, yung pagtake ng fingerprint, na kinukuhanan ng fingerprint record yung isang tao, then that would be uh, filed into into the record. 
So if if there is already an existing record nga ng ng taong yan, it's easy now to identify whether or not um he has already a past criminal record through his fingerprints. Ito isipin mo din, na it happens that you have already a criminal record. Ibig sabihin na huli ka na once nakuha na ng nakuha na ng uh, pulis yung fingerprint mo once at na-file na nila yon. Then you committed again another crime, na? Probably nakatakas ka na naman, nasa labas ka na naman, nakapagpiyansa, nag-commit ka na naman ng crime. And at this time, hindi ka na huli. It just happened na yung fingerprint mo na iwan sa crime scene. So upon investigation, upon crime scene processing, may nakuha silang fingerprint at uh, tinignan nila sa record nila if meron ngang fingerprint na ganoon sa kanilang record. And it happens that your fingerprint left on the crime scene match to your fingerprint record onto the police station. So what does it signify? Does it mean that this person does, was the one who committed the crime? No. It only associate the, the person, yung taong nakaiwan ng prints niya doon sa crime scene, to the crime. Da? Nire-relate lang siya doon. Parang nilalapit lang siya. That there is a tendency na siya yung nag-commit ng crime or there is a tendency na meron siyang alam or kinalaman doon sa krimen na na-commit. Okay? So that's number three. Number four, we discussed this already. Fingerprints can also substitute yung tinatawag nating signature. Okay? So uh, as you can see, uh, nowadays, if you cannot write or if you cannot write your signature, you are required to have your prints uh, impressed onto the document, and that is already acceptable as as an um, as a signature. Actually, that's more reliable because mas madali pang pekehin ang ang signature kumpara doon sa prints natin, which is very unique, na in details. Okay, so uh, those are some of the practical use of fingerprint. Let us proceed to the uh, last topic. We have here the advantages of using fingerprint as a means of identification. Uh, what are the advantage? Na? What, what are the advantages of using fingerprint? If we're going to compare to DNA, if we're going to compare to other biometrics, what are the advantages of using fingerprint in identification? In personal identification. So we have here the following. Number one, not much training is necessary. Da? Konting training lang ang kailangan when, when it comes to uh, training individuals for them to be able to take fingerprint, classify fingerprints, compare fingerprints. Even you as the student, at the end of the semester, you are already uh, knowledgeable on how are you going to classify, compare fingerprints based on what are we going to learn so it's just uh it's actually easy to train kasi um easy ha not to the point that kaya mo talaga siyang matutunan in in just one sitting no but if we're going to compare it to other biometrics such as dna such as um irish recognition now yung mga ganun is very complicated it takes maybe a year or it takes a degree before you learn uh, the skill on how to classify, how to identify, or establish identity. So, compared doon sa other biometrics natin, ang fingerprint identification training is easier compared to those. That's why sinabing easy. Pero hindi naman talaga siya madali. Madali lang siya if we're going to compare it to other identification techniques that we have. Another advantage of fingerprint is uh, no expensive instruments are required in the operation. That's true. Na? You only need to have, you know, yung mga, uh, when it comes to uh, comparison or identification, you only need a magnifying lens, no? magnifying glass, uh, ridge counter. You know? When it comes naman sa development of Latin prints, you only need to have the a brush and the fingerprint powder and the lifting tape yun lang yung mga kailangan mo very cheap um, instrument if we're going to compare again to DNA if we're going to compare to other 
personal identification techniques na sobrang mahal ang mga gagastuhin mo when it comes sa equipments pa lang. Na? So, compared to expenses when it comes to the instrument that are being or that needed to be purchased or used, I think uh, fingerprint is much cheaper compared to other personal identification techniques. Next, we have the fingerprint itself is easy to classify. That's true. Na? <laughs> compared to other personal identification techniques, it's easy to classify if you know the rules and you know the formula. Madali, madali lang siyang matutunan basta alam mo lamang sundan or sundin yung yung formula and then yung principle ng pag-classify. Sabi nga natin, uh, little training is needed in in terms of uh, in terms of gaining the skill to to classify uh, fingerprints according to to their patterns according to their uh, minute details. Okay? And lastly, we have actual prints for comparative purposes are always available and suspected errors can be easily check and that is true that yung mga actual prints na are are there physically na and uh, since you know if if you are already if you hold already the person in custody you can always look for other uh, specimen unlike unlike question document na uh, if if we're dealing with uh, with with uh, handwriting, there are tendencies na ma, ma, uh, hindi na ma-recreate yung handwriting na yun kasi nga, different conditions. Eh. Uh, yung pagsusulat is affected by your mental state at the time of writing, your the, the weather condition at the time of writing, yung mga yun yung mahirap siyang i-manipulate. Unlike fingerprint, regardless of the situation, the specimens are always present. No? So when we're talking about when we are talking about the ano naman, when we are talking about the fingerprint itself that can be preserved through uh, photograph no and still nandun pa rin yung mga minute details na pwede pa rin nating i-observe so uh, those are some of the advantages of using fingerprint as a means of identification if we are going to compare that to other identification techniques okay so, uh, for today's lecture, I think uh, that would be only uh, today. And the additional for this will be uploaded soon. So, if you have questions for the things that we discussed, no? kung may mga tanong kayo, please don't hesitate to ask questions. And if you have any um, additional inputs with regards to the things that we discussed, do not hesitate also to put them on the comment section and I will... Uh, try to read and uh, and respond to all of those things okay so uh, that's it for today's lecture thank you for listening see you guys on the next video